This video we're going to look at real life examples uh, where we need to multiply decimals. So here's example one, mug of strong coffee. Example two, gasoline costs and how much to fill up with 12 gallons. Uh, example uh, three, that's uh, example two. Example three is um, renting a car. Example four is area and perimeter of a rectangle with decimal inches. Okay. Uh, length and width. Okay, so look at example one. Have a read of it and see if you can do it. Um, hopefully, you can read it. It says if one mug of strong coffee contains 172 milligrams of caffeine, how much caffeine is contained in 2.5 mugs of coffee? Now, hopefully, you might be familiar with the fact that 0.5 is a half. So, we're talking about two and a half mugs of coffee. So, if you drank two and a half mugs of coffee, and how much caffeine did you take altogether, right? So, what should we do with these two numbers? Add, subtract, multiply, or divide. I think you should multiply. Yep. So, this has more digits in it, so I like to put that guy on the top. I like to put 2.5 on the bottom. And just go ahead and multiply. So, please press pause and do this yourself then check to see if you get the same thing as me, right? Okay, so 5 times 2 is 10, carry the 1, 5 times 7, 35, and 1 is 36, and carry 3, 5 ones is 5, and 3 is 8, down a placeholder 0, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 7 is 14, carry 1, 2 times 1 is 2, and 1 is 3, add 0, 10, carry the 1, um, 13, carry 1, and 4. Where, what should we do with the decimal point? We have one decimal place in the question, so we need 1 in the answer. So 430.0, which of course is equal to 430. What units should we use on the answer though? The question is, how much caffeine is contained in 2.5 mugs of coffee? Or 2.5 mugs? 430 milligrams, right? Milligrams of caffeine is the answer. Yep. Example Example 2. If gasoline costs $3.28 per gallon when you pay with a credit card, but 7 cents per gallon less if you pay with cash, how much do you save by paying with cash for a 12 gallon fill up? Hmm. Go ahead and press pause and work it out. Just pe press pause, try it yourself, and then check the video. Because the idea is that you think hard and you make mistakes. Uh, and if you make a mistake, then you get to catch it by watching the, me do the example. Instead of just getting stuck in your homework and, and uh, you know, it's kind of frustrating because there's nobody to show you what to do. So please think, think hard on these videos and try and get the examples out on your own. Okay. So, gasoline costs $3.28 per gallon, 7 cents less if you pay with cash. Hmm. Okay. There's a few ways of figuring this out. How much do you save? Well, let me give you a trick. Do you save uh, seven cents per gallon? Right? Well, isn't that um, seven cents times twelve? Because you got twelve gallons, right? I mean, if you get ten gallons with cash, you're going to save seventy cent. It's 0.7 times 10, right? So that would be a quick way to figure it out. There's no... I mean, if you get the right answer, that's fine. You got the right answer. But anyway, this is just something I type my... So, um, I guess I could do it this way. 2 times 7 is 14. Carry the 1. And 2 times 0 is uh, nothing. And 1 is 14. 2 times 0 is 0. Put down a zero placeholder and 1 times 7 is 7, 1 times 0 is nothing, and so on. 
add these guys four eight zero and so on how many decimal places in the question one two how many in the answer one two so the answer should be zero point eight four the answer is and that's money isn't it that's what you say zero point eighty four eighty four cents zero point eight four dollars right so it's kind of funny we didn't actually have to use that number we could have but we didn't have to all right um, suppose it costs thirty five dollars per day and eighteen cents per mile to rent a car what is the total bill if it is rented for three days and driven nine hundred or one hundred and ninety miles okay so by all means press pause try and do it yourself and then check the video and see what happened and see if you got the same answer okay and it doesn't matter if it's not done the exact same way if you get the right answer you're right and you did a great job all right so thirty five dollars per day I'll just focus on that for for the first part and we rented it for three days okay so if we just we can just figure that out on its own to begin with right thirty five times three right oops thirty five times three so calculate that three times five fifteen carry the one three times three is nine and one is ten so that is, and is there any decimal places here? No, nope, that's $105 right there, okay? So that's the cost for um, the days, right? And then look at the miles. 18 cent per mile, and we went 190 miles. So what do we do with those numbers? Think we should multiply them, right? If it was um, 10 cent per mile and you went 3 miles, what would the cost be? 10 cent per mile, drive it 3 miles, they're going to charge you how much? 30 cent, right? Or 3 times 10. Okay, so that's how you know to multiply. 18 cent per mile, 109 miles, you got to multiply. And I like to put the long digit on the top. 0 0.18 on the bottom. Okay. 8 times 0, 0. 8 times 9. So press pause and do it, then check check what check if you got the same thing. Eight or erase me and then see if you get the same thing. 8 times 9, 72, carry the 7. 8 times 1 is 8 and 7 is 15. Placeholder 0 and now 1 times 0 is 0. Watch that. 1 times 0 is 0, 1 times 9 is 9, 1 times 1 is 1 and then 0 times everything, well we don't need to do that so we can just add these guys we get 0, 2, 4 and carry the 1, 3 so 3, 4, 2, where should the decimal point go? 1, 2 places in the question so 1, 2 places in the answer, right? 34.20 so the cost per of the mi of the 190 miles is $34.20 the cost of the three days was what? what was the cost for the three days on their own? $105 right? so we gotta go 105 plus 34.20. Now, if I'm going to add 34.20, where do I put the 34.20? Here. I've got hundreds, tens, ones, and so on. So the tens go under the tens, the ones go under the ones, then the tenths, then the hundreds. And 105 has a decimal point here, no tenths and no hundreds, right? Hundredths. So adding them, zero, two, nine decimal point underneath each other three one okay so total cost hundred and thirty nine dollars twenty cents okay so that is the final answer example four a rectangle has a width of three point six five inches and a length of eight point one three find the perimeter then find the area 
please draw it. Always draw the thing. Always draw if you can. If 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 there's it's ever talking about a shape. So one uh, length, one size of the sides is 8.13 inches. The other is 3.65. Okay. If I'm getting the perimeter, which is the distance all the way around the outside, do I just get this distance and this distance and stop, or do I have to get more than that? I also need to get this distance, which is, how far is it from here to here? It's a rectangle, so the opposite sides are the same length, aren't they? So this is 3.65, isn't it? And I also have to get this distance, which is 8.13, right? So I need to add, um, if I'm getting the distance all the way around the outside, I've got to add um, 3.65 with 3.65, and I'm going to also add 8.13 and 8.13, don't I? So this will give me the total distance around the outside, adding all these numbers. So by all means press pause, do this, and see if you get the same thing as me. Okay, now I'll do it. 5 and 5 is 10, and this is 6. 10 and 6 is 16, carry the 1. 1, 2, 3, and 6 is 9, and 6 is uh, 15. Carry the 1, put down the decimal point. Okay, so we got 8 and 8 is 16 and 1 is 17 and 3 is 20 and 3 is 23. So the perimeter is uh, 16 yeah is 23.56 inches. Okay, so that's the perimeter. What about the area? What's the area? Do you remember how to get the area? Really quickly, just mind you, if you had a rectangle, it was two inches by um, three inches. That area would be one, two, three, four, five, six square inches. Six squares. Okay? So to get the area, you take the length, you multiply it by the width. Now our length and width is 8.13 and 3.65. So what do we do with those numbers? Multiply them. 8.13, 3.65. Please press pause, do this yourself, then check to see if you get the same thing as me. So that will help you catch your mistakes. So when you do the homework, it should go quite smoothly, hopefully. So 5 times 3, 15, carry the 1. 5 times 1 is 5, 1 is 6. 5 times 8 is 40, put down a placeholder 0, multiply by 6, 6 times 3, 18, carry the 1, 6 ones is 1 and 7, and 1 is 7, 6 eighths is 48, right, now multiply by 3, we've got to put down two placeholder zeros, 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 8 is 24, now we need to add 5, 6 and 8, 14, carry the 1. This makes 17, carry the 1. 12, that's, this made 16, carry the 1. This made 9, and then 2. Now where did you de where'd you put your decimal point? Let's count them. We should have 1, 2, 3, 4 decimal places in the problem. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Four in the answer, right? Twenty nine point six seven four two, and the units on that is square inches, or i n squared. That means square inches. Okay. Now, does that make sense? This eight is approximately what's eight as a, a whole number? Round it to a whole number. Approximately eight. Eight point one three. Sorry, is approximately eight. Three point six five is approximately. I think I made a mistake. Let's check. No, that that is correct. 
Uh, 3 is approximately, 3.65 is approximately 4, and, and what's 8 times 4? 8 times 4 is 32. So, you know, it's probably less, less than 32, and sure, 29.6, that's a little bit less than 32. So, yeah, that, anyway, that's, yeah, just shows you we're in, in the ballpark, but yes, that is actually correct, too. Okay.